Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Every young woman faces the problem in her senior year of high school of what she is going to do after graduation. We'd like to suggest a possible career that has much to offer any young girl who is about to finish high school and hasn't made up her mind yet. This possible occupation is nursing. Today, the fields open to the graduate nurse are wide and varied. She can enter hospital service, private duty, research, or any one of numerous others. To become a registered nurse, you must complete the usual three-year course. Or you may combine your studies with four or five years in college and earn a B.S. degree, too. Your studies in such vital subjects as psychology, sociology, and child care are supervised by skilled doctors and graduate nurses. If you are interested in finding out more about this career, you should go to your nearest hospital or collegiate school of nursing. Or you can discuss it with your school advisor. More nurses are a growing national need. Why don't you look into it today? This message is brought to you as a public service. A light snow was drifting down, and a dark, sullen-looking sky threatened worse weather to come as two rough-looking men halted their teams before a lonely cabin on the banks of the Yukon River. Well, hello there, son. What's your name? Gary Wallace. Glad to know you, Gary. I wonder if me and my partner here could get a bite to eat. Gosh, I... I don't know. Shut, you wouldn't turn away a couple of hungry travelers, would you? We've come all the way from Circle City up in Alaska. Ran out of grub last night. I'd like to help you. Well, what's stopping you? If it's money you're worried about, we'll pay for what we eat. Oh, it's not that. You see, my dad doesn't like visitors. He warned me not to let anyone in while he was gone. Oh, he's not here, huh? No, he went to Dawson to stock up on supplies. <laughs> in that case, I reckon he can't very well keep us out. Come on, Magpie, let's go inside. Yeah. Golly, my dad's not going to like this. Go on, stop your beefing and rustle us up some grub. Intimidated by the threatening manner of the two rough-looking strangers, Gary did as he was told. The two men ate ravenously. When they'd wolfed down the last morsels of the meal which Gary had prepared, the man called Spade remarked. Ah. You know, it sounds to me like your old man is a kind of a gent that don't trust banks either. He doesn't. He lost all his money because of a bank failure back in the States. He's never trusted them since. Kind of risky keeping all this gold right here in the cabin. Oh, there's no danger of anyone stealing it. You see, he has it hidden away be behind a loose stone. In the I mean, he keeps huh? it in a special hiding place. What? <laughs> now, that's interesting. I wonder where that hiding place would be, Magpie. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. Behind a loose stone, he said. Uh-huh. Only one thing inside this cabin that's made out of stone. That's that fireplace. Well, let's go take a look. Yeah, let's do that. No, you have no right Shut to... Shut up and sit down. No. Don't seem like any of these stones is loose. It must be here someplace. Wait a minute. By thunder, you found it. Don't, please don't take out that stone. Shut up, kid, before I caught you one. You take your knife a minute, Magpie, while I pry out this stone. Yeah, the head is. Boy, what do you know about that? Comes right out as neat as you please. Anything inside the hole? I'll tell the world there's something inside here. 
couple of nice fat pokes. You put those back. Those belong to my dad. Don't we told you to shut up. But you can't take Listen, those... Listen, Sonny, one more yap out of you and I'll shut you up for keep. Go on, open up the pokes, Spade. Sure. Chuck full of gold dust. Both of them. Feast your eyes on that magpie. The God's Spade, the kid's got a poker. Boy, you little pole cat. Oh. Don't try any more of your tricks and I'll wrap this poker around your skull. Please, please don't take that gold. It's all we've got. When my dad gets home, he'll skin me alive. Now, what'll we do with him, Spade? Better tie him up in case he tries going for help. Give me that rope hanging on the wall. Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, here you are. Now then, young fella, turn around and put your hands out and back here. And don't you try putting up a fight. While you're tying him up, I'll take a look around the cabin. See if there's anything else worth it. All right. Yeah, might as well take the rest of these supplies, huh, Spade? Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh! Oh, well, yeah, what do you know? Here's some of his old man's clothes. A pair of buckskin pants, a couple nice heavy woolen shirts. Oh, looks like they just about fit me. What are you doing now? I'm going to try out some of these clothes. I right, thunder you take anything lying around loose. No wonder they call you magpie. Why shouldn't I take it? I've been eating some new duds for quite a while. I guess that'll hold you, kid. Get them all tied up? Yeah, now hurry up with them clothes. The sooner we clear out of here, the safer we'll be. That same day, Sergeant Preston was returning from 40 Mile to Dawson City. As the afternoon wore on, the weather grew steadily worse and finally developed into a howling blizzard. Soon after nightfall, the sergeant came in sight of the Wallace camp and decided to seek shelter there overnight. Okay. Well, wrong in there, King. Let's see if the door is open. Wait a minute till I light the lamp. Sergeant Preston and King. Gary, what happened? Two crooks stopped off at the cabin. They stole my dad's gold and tied me up. I'll soon have these ropes off, your son. Where's your father? He went to Dawson early this morning to get supplies. I thought he'd be back by this time. The storm probably delayed him. Golly, I'll be afraid to face him. Huh? What do you mean? It's my fault the gold was stolen. Dad had it hidden behind a loose stone in the fireplace. I talked too much and gave the secret away. Perhaps we can find those cooks and recover the gold, Gary. I sure hope so, Sergeant. There you go. You're free now. Thanks a lot. Gosh, they have those ropes tied awful tight. My arms are numb. What did the two men look like? Well, one was real big and husky and had black whiskers. His name was Spade. The other was called Magpie. He was shorter than Spade. And let me see. He had sort of sandy-colored hair. And a mole on the left side of his nose. Any idea which way they were heading? They said they'd come from Circle City, Alaska. Heading south, in other words. Probably on their way to Dawson. Golly, Sergeant. If you go after them, please take me with you. Why, Gary? I'm scared to face Dad. He'll whale the tar out of me. Oh, gee, I'll bet that's Dad now. Take it easy, Gary. You'll have to face him sooner or later. May as well get it over with now. What in blazes is going on here? I have some bad news for you, Milo. Bad news? What are you talking about? Two bandits were here and stole your gold. What? Stole my gold? Oh, I couldn't have. I had it hidden away in the... I wonder they... They did. The stone's out. I couldn't help it, Dad. I didn't mean to tell them. It just slipped out. You no good young lout. I'll teach you to keep that mouth of yours shut. Wait a minute, Milo. Get out of my way. I warned him not to let anyone come to the cabin while I was gone. I said, wait a minute. What's done's done. Gary made a mistake, and he realizes it. Taking your temper out on him isn't going to get your gold back. Over $6,000 worth of dust I had. All the gold I've taken out of my claim so far. It's your own fault for keeping it here in your cabin. If you'd put it in the bank, this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> banks, don't make me laugh. I want nothing to do with banks, or people either. Now, get out of my way while I give him what's coming to him. Hold it a minute, Milo. If you want any help in getting your gold back, you'll have to be fair with Gary. You promise me that, I'll see what I can do. Well, all right. But just what do you think you can do? Possible I'll be able to trail the bandits. Gary, they leave anything behind that might give King a scent? Well, yes, sir. They left some clothes behind. Some clothes? Yes, sir. The one called Magpie took a shirt and a pair of trousers that belonged to Dad. What? And left his old ones here. What's that? Calm down, Milo. This may be the means of getting your gold back. Where are the clothes he left behind, Gary? Over there in the corner, on the floor. Oh. Come on, King. <laughs> After King had sniffed the clothes, Sergeant Preston took him outside and began working in circles around the cabin in hopes that the great dog would be able to pick up the trail of the two criminals. About 20 minutes later, the sergeant re-entered the cabin with a grave look on his face. Well, what's the matter? 
No luck? No, Milo. The blizzard's wiped out the scent completely. I knew you wouldn't be able to catch him. Let's have another look at those clothes. What are you going to do, Sergeant? See if he left anything in the pockets that might give us a clue. I'm pretty sure he went through the pockets of his pants. Oh, wait a minute. There's something in his shirt. A piece of paper. Yes. With a diagram drawn on it. It's like a map, and it's got printing on it. Evidently shows the layout of a mine on Siwash Creek. Look, it's got the location of a safe mark. Not only the location, the combination of the safes written down here, too. Golly, I'll bet they're planning to rob that mine. Ah, uh, a lot of poppycock, if you ask me. Maybe, maybe not. And the way these mine buildings are laid out, I'd say this was a diagram of the Ace High Mine. How long ago did they leave here, Gary? It was sometime this morning, about 10 or 11 o'clock. In other words, six or seven hours ago. If they headed straight for Siwash Creek, they should be there soon. Come on, King. You and I have some hard traveling ahead of us. <laughs> After leaving the cabin, Spade and Magpie had headed straight for Siwash Creek. When they arrived at their destination that night, they took up a position in the hills overlooking the Ace High Mine. They waited for about half an hour after the last light had gone out in the mine bunkhouse. And then Spade said, well, I reckon they're all asleep by this time. Yeah, yeah. We just have to take care of the watchman in the mine office. You got that diagram with a combination to the safe on it? Sure, it's right here in my pocket. It. Holy mackerel. Now what's the matter? I left the diagram in my shirt pocket back at that cabin. Yeah, you stupid jughead. Thought you went through your pockets. I did go through my pants pockets. Guess I forgot about my shirt. Well, we'll have to go back and get it. No, we won't. I can remember the combination. Are you sure? Sure. Let's see. Right, 10. Left, 16. Right, 2. Left, 20. All right. Then grab your gun and let's go. <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hurry and get pencil and paper right now. There's some fun and excitement waiting for you. Can you guess what it is? Yes, sir, it's the ballpark where everything is fun. The crowds, the eats, and what a thrill to see the players smack that ball over the fence. Come out to the game now as guest of your favorite team. If you're 12 years old or younger and can bring a paying adult like mom or dad, grab your pencil and paper. Here's how to get your free baseball ticket. Get a package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball. Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Hurry, send the box top now from Quaker Puff Wheat or Puff Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets when you send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. We'll give you the address now and again later in the program. Write it down. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> Now to continue. With handkerchiefs tied over their faces, Spade and Magpie made their way down the hill toward the Ace High Mine. Spade was carrying a coil of rope over his left arm. When they reached the mine office, they paused for a moment to peer through the lighted window. Yeah, there's a watchman. He's sitting at the desk. Yeah. Looks like he's half asleep. Come on, we'll go up and knock on the door. Let me do the talking. Who is it? A traveler, I need help. My partner busted his leg out in the trail. Wait a minute, we're all back. Mash, man. Get your hands up, mister, and start backing up. One do you no good to hold me up. I can't open the safe for you. I don't know the combination. Shut up and turn around. But I'm telling I you... I said shut up and turn around. That's better. Oh. <laughs> That's what I call a real sweet rap on the head, Spade. You laid him out cold. Never mind the postmortem. Just get busy and open that safe while I tie and gag this gent. It was about half an hour past midnight when Sergeant Preston arrived at the Ace High Mine. He saw that the buildings were aglow with light, and a small group of men were gathered around the open door of the mine office. Well, King, well, King looks as though we arrived too late. Hey, here comes the Molly now. Who's in charge here? Well, I am out here. I'm the owner of this mine, Gideon Clay. I'm Sergeant Preston. What happened? The mine office was robbed. Crooks opened up the safe and got away with nearly 50000 in gold. How long ago? Well, about three, four hours ago. But we just heard about it at midnight when Jed came to relieve the watchman. 
He found him lying on the floor, all tied up and gagged. Was the safe forced open? No, no. That's a funny thing. There's no marks on it at all. Whoever the crooks were, they must have known the combination. Here, take a look at this paper. Huh? Is that the correct combination to your safe? Uh, let me see. Why, yes, by thunder it is. And this diagram shows the layout of the mine buildings. Where'd you get this paper, Sergeant? Two men robbed a miner north of Dawson this morning and left this paper behind by accident. What? That's how I happened to come here. Do you know who the men were? The miner's little boy saw their faces, gave me a good description of them. Uh, from the looks of this paper, the robbery tonight must have been an inside job. Not much doubt of that. Someone here at the mine evidently sent them that diagram and the combination to the safe. How many people knew the combination? Well, I do, naturally, being the owner of the mine. Aside from me, the only one who knows is my foreman here, Joe Sterling. Huh? He takes charge of things while I'm away. I hope you're not accusing me of being in on this robbery. Well, Joe, I... I don't like to say it, but I'm beginning to think my trust in you was misplaced. That's not true, Mr. Clay. What did you mean by that remark? Well, I hate to make accusations, but... It so happens that Joe once served a jail term for robbery. What? I hired him for this job, thinking he'd reform. I swear I had nothing to do with this robbery, Mr. Clay. You've got to believe me. Were you insured against robbery? Yes, of course. It's not the loss of money that makes me feel bad. It's it's my loss of faith in Joe here. You're sure that no one else but you two knew the combination? Positive. In that case, Sterling, I'm afraid I'll have to place you under arrest. The following morning in Dawson City, Sergeant Preston made a complete report on the case to Inspector Conrad at Mounted Police Headquarters. You don't sound quite convinced of Sterling's guilt, Sergeant. Frankly, sir, I'm not. Any particular reason? Well, for one thing, he's been going straight for the last three years. I questioned him, and he strikes me as being honest. Well, that wouldn't count much with the jury. No, sir, I realize that, but the whole thing just doesn't make sense. Sterling was the only person, in addition to the owner, who knew the combination, and on top of that, he had a prison record. How could he hope to profit by the crime when suspicion was dead certain to fall on him? I see what you mean, Sergeant. But if not Sterling, then whom can we suspect? In my opinion, sir, almost anyone at the mine, including Gideon Clay. The owner? Yes, sir, he was insured against robbery. And that means he might have planned the job himself in order to collect the insurance. Well, all this is guesswork, Sergeant. Unless you can unearth some definite facts that incriminate someone else, I'm afraid we'll have to hold Sterling in custody. Very well, sir. In the meantime, I'll let the city patrol and send the descriptions of the two hold-up men to all police posts in the territory and check all hotels, boarding houses, and cafes here in Dawson. Right, sir. Come along, King. Oh, oh, oh! Soon after the sergeant left Inspector Conrad's office, Gideon Clay knocked on the door of a certain room at the Imperial Hotel. Oh, it's you, Clay. Clay Speed. He's here. Come on inside. Well, howdy, Clay. Guess we pulled off that job pretty neat last night, huh? Well, from what I hear, that wasn't the only job you pulled off in the last 24 hours. Huh? Oh, we robbed a miner yesterday morning, if that's what you mean. How'd you find out about that? You stupid fools. You left that diagram behind, I sent you. The Monty's got a hold of it. It was Magpie's fault, not mine. Well, whoever's to blame, we're in a fine mess. The Monty's have connected up the two jobs. Now they're looking for you. Calm down. They ain't found us yet, have they? They'll find you all right now that they have your descriptions. And when they do, that miner's kid will be able to identify you in front of a jury. They don't sound so good, Spade. Yeah, clear out of Dawson. Lie low for a while. You'll do more than that. What do you mean? I'm not taking any chances. I want the two of you to go up to that miner's cabin and get rid of that boy. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. 
Say, kids, have you ever seen a star baseball player in person? Maybe you've seen his picture on the sport page or on the screen. But what a thrill to see him in person, right there on the ballpark with the crowds cheering and yelling. And now's your chance. Come on out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. You can get in the park free. If you are 12 years old or younger, just bring mom or dad a paying adult. To get your free ticket, just get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205. Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are right on the ticket. And boy, what fun you'll have. What excitement. <laughs> Hurry, kids. For each free baseball ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or get two free tickets by sending the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Write down the address so you won't forget. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Send right away. Later that same morning, Sergeant Preston came to the Imperial Hotel and questioned the desk clerk. Dave, I'm looking for two men. One's big, heavy set, black bearded. Other's shorter, has sandy hair, and a mole on the left side of his nose. Have two men like that checked in recently? Well, they sure did, Sergeant. They checked in sometime around midnight. But you won't find them here now. They're not in their rooms. Well, they paid their bill and cleared out just about all. Half an hour ago. You know if they've had any visitors? Why, well, yes, they did. A fellow came to see them this morning, just a little while before they left. He stopped here at the desk and asked for their room number. I don't suppose you know who he was. Well, well, I think I've seen him around town a few times, but I don't know his name. What's he look like? Oh, he's middle-aged, uh, sort of skinny, and he's got a iron gray side whiskers. And he walks with a limp. Thanks, Dave. Has the room been occupied yet? No, not yet, Sergeant. Then lock it up and keep it vacant. I'll be back in about ten minutes. Sergeant Preston hurried back to headquarters and reported the news to Inspector Conrad. Mm. Does that description of that visitor mean anything to you, Sergeant? It certainly does, Inspector. It's a perfect description of Gideon Clay. Gideon Clay? Yes, sir. I suggest we send a constable to the mine immediately and arrest him. In the meantime, I'll take King back to the hotel and put him on the trail of the two holdup men. Go to it, Sergeant. It looks as though you were right about Joe Sterling's innocence. It was mid-afternoon when Spade and Magpie approached Milo Wallace's plane. They halted their teams well out of sight of the camp. Oh, 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 oh. Leave our sleds here so they won't hear the husky. Yeah, good idea. All right, let's go. Continuing on foot, the two men made their way through the trees bordering the trail. As they reached the edge of the clearing in which the cabin was situated, they saw Milo Wallace working his claim in back of the cabin. A shotgun was lying across the top of a box several feet away from the spot where he was working. Must be the kid's old man. Yeah. From the looks of that shotgun, he's expecting trouble. Come on, let's take him. Right. All right, mister, get your hands up. What's that? Don't go for that gun or we'll drill you. So start reaching fast. Why, it's under you must be the two crooks that stole my gold. Right the first time. Now, where's that kid of yours? He's gone to visit a neighbor down the river. He's lying, Spade. The kid's probably inside the cabin. What do you want with my boy? It happens he got too good a look at our faces yesterday. So we got orders to get rid of him. Get rid of him? You mean kill him? That's what I mean. We'll have to kill you too now that you can identify us. No, you can't kill my ah, boy. Shut up. Go in the cabin, Magpie. See if he's inside. Right. Just then, the back door of the cabin opened and Gary started to come out. Gary, go back. As he caught sight of the crooks, he gave a gasp of alarm and tried to dart back into the cabin. But Magpie stopped him with a shout. Hold it, Sonny. You're just the person we're looking for. So he went to visit a neighbor, huh? All right, kid. Come on over here and join the party. There's no need to kill my boy. He won't testify against you. I swear he won't. Have your breath, mister. Listen, just let him alone and I'll pay you for his life. Pay you plenty. Pay us with what? We took all your gold yesterday. But I can sell my claim. It'll bring at least $5,000. Sorry, mister. It's a tempting offer. But we can't take any chance. But you can't hurt him. All right, Magpie, no he's... use wasting any more time. Don't you plug the kid, I'll plug his old man. He's right. too young to die. At you that can't. moment, a voice suddenly rang out from the edge of the clearing. Out those guns! A Mounty, I'll get him! No. Mounty's gun spoke no. first, and Spade fell to the ground. Come here, At the kid. same time, Magpie grabbed the boy, oh, intending to use him as a shield. No. Sergeant right. Preston was afraid to fire for fear of hitting oh, Gary. Milo oh, lunged at the crook. Let's go, that boy. You asked for it. Oh. Swinging his gun, the crook caught Milo a vicious blow across the forehead. As Milo staggered back, stunned by the blow, Magpie swerved his gun to fire at Sergeant Preston. But the great dog king was already upon him. With a single crunch of his mighty jaws, he disarmed the crook. 
screaming with pain, Magpie let go of Gary and toppled backward under the force of King's attack. Help me, Monty, for the love of Mike. Get this dog away from me. Hold him, King, while I get his gun. All right, fella, I have it. Get up on your feet, mister. Don't try any tricks. You and your partner are under arrest in the name of the clown. After handcuffing Magpie, Sergeant Preston attended to the other crook. Spade was unconscious from the shock of the wound, but he soon revived after the sergeant had applied first aid. Where in blazes did you come from, Monty? I trailed the two of you here from your hotel in Dawson. Hey, Thunder, you sure showed up in the nick of time, Sergeant. These two crooks were going to kill my boy. It wasn't our idea. It was Gideon Clay put us up to it. That's right. He was afraid the kid would identify us. Say, Sergeant, who's this Gideon Clay they're talking about? Gideon Clay is the owner of the Aceheim Mine. By this time, he's under arrest. Is he the one who sent them that diagram, Sergeant? Yes, Gary. There's no doubt about it. But, but golly, why would he want to rob his own mine? He was covered by insurance, son. Apparently, he figured on collecting the insurance money and then getting back a share of the gold that was taken. Yeah, that's right, Monty. Clay cooked up the whole scheme. It was all his idea. We had to kick back half of the gold to him. Don't think you can escape punishment by throwing all the blame on Clay. You'll all stand trial. Yes, I, uh... I reckon I owe you an apology for the way I behaved yesterday, Sergeant. Forget it, my lord. Ever since my wife died and I lost all my money in that bank failure back in the States, I've been down on the whole human race. But what happened today sure opened my eyes. This boy of mine means more to me than I ever realized. I have him to live for as well as myself. From now on, son, things are going to be a lot different. Golly, Dad, that sounds swell. We both have reason to be mighty grateful to you, Sergeant. There's no need to thank me, Milo. Seeing the two of you come to a new understanding with each other is reward enough. Now the two and Gary are close together again, I can really say this case is closed. Here's a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for Mutual's famous programs, especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. <laughs> These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all Americans.